Hello my friends and welcome back to another vlog. You all asked for it so we're doing another Christmas horror holiday winter reading vlog. I kind of changed it a little bit because not all of these are super Christmassy. <laughs> some of them are just like wintry horror reads and then some are like specifically Christmas so that's why the title got a little bit longer and a little bit different this vlog. Yeah that's what we're doing. We're reading four different books. A lot of them were on Kindle Unlimited this time around probably just because that's what I picked. I don't know. I didn't mean to but I have a lot of Kindle Unlimited for this reading vlog but there are four books in this reading vlog. I read them, I tell you how I feel and that's that's that. That's pretty much how the vlog goes. This is probably the last reading vlog of 2022. That's yeah, that's true. I'm probably not going to do another one before 2022 ends. So this is the last reading vlog and I wanted to make it a little bit Christmassy, a little bit holiday-y, a little bit wintry so that way it was a little bit on theme for it being almost Christmas time. So yeah, that's what we're doing in this vlog and I hope you all enjoy. Hello friends and welcome to the first check-in for this reading vlog. It is Saturday. It's about uh, 4 p.m. almost and I did not check in yesterday but I did read The Visitor by Sergio Gomez. I was gonna check in during the halfway point but it's a really short novella. It's like around 90 pages so <laughs> it kind of just happened that I finished it and then I was like well Oh well, I guess they're gonna get one update from me. This little novella is about a group of people who get stranded inside a diner on Christmas Day due to a snowstorm and they encounter an alien. Look, I was just talking about this. I feel like because it's the end of the year and I've been hitting so many duds recently that I've become more harsh with my ratings and I don't I don't know if that's true or if I'm just running into books that I just don't really love but I wanted to love this one way more than I did and I thought I might enjoy it because I did love Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez but for some reason this just didn't quite work for me. I'm super picky with alien horror and that's just because I look I grew up in New Mexico I grew up going to Roswell and I have a very just like I just I have a thing about aliens and so horror with aliens has to be done in a certain way or I'm gonna absolutely hate it <laughs> that's just how picky I am about alien horror and so for me this just didn't feel like an alien horror story it felt I don't know it just it just didn't have a that kind of punch for me it just didn't feel alien enough I guess. I don't know it just fell short it fell flat for me. Another thing is this is like 90 pages it's a very short novella and that short of a novella just doesn't always work for me because it doesn't give me enough time to build up any of like suspense or any of the thrilling aspects. I barely get to know the characters so I don't really have any connection towards them. I just don't really care about them. I don't know who they are. I don't have any feelings towards them one way or another so watching people die in short novellas like this just doesn't have an effect on me and I want it to have an effect on me. I want to feel some type of way about the characters and for this I didn't. It kind of just felt like nothing happened and I know that's not true because there was stuff happening but it was just too quick I think that I was like eh I don't know I don't know how to feel like it's just whatever so 
I personally didn't enjoy this as much as I wanted to. I really had high hopes for it and I really wanted to love it and a lot of people do so I highly recommend checking it out if it sounds like something you'd enjoy because I do think a lot of people are going to love this. For me it just didn't really work. I just didn't feel any connection to the plot, to the story, to the characters, to really anything. <laughs> like it was just me reading to get it done. At least it was short so that way my feelings were over fairly quickly but I don't know. I just didn't enjoy this one as much as I wanted to and I'm really sad about it and I also just feel like weird about it. I don't know. I think I've been really like hitting a lot of books that I just haven't been enjoying and it's been really unfortunate for me and now I'm just kind of <laughs> I'm just kind of like can something be good please? Can I actually enjoy a book? Is that is that too hard to ask? So unfortunately this one just didn't 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 do it for me so the next book I'm going to read is actually another novella I believe it's around the 80 page mark as well and I don't think this has anything to do with Christmas so I am cheating just a little little, little bit but I am going to read this is where we talk things out but this I believe is just a wintry horror novella it's not Christmas related this is about a mother and daughter who take a weekend away to reconnect and try to have like a last ditch attempt to resolve things between them and things get out of hand. I've seen a lot of people uh, say this is very similar to Misery by Stephen King which is very funny because I read Misery earlier this month so very interested to see what it's like, how it goes. A lot of people have been loving this one recently so I'm hoping that I also enjoy it. I'm having, I'm having a hard time with reading right now it's just I'm not reading any books that I really really love so so I hope I enjoy this one, uh, but that is what I will be reading next and I will check in when, maybe when I get to the halfway point. If it's only 80 pages, I'll probably finish it and then just come on and tell you what I think, but I will come on and tell you at some point something about it. and welcome to another check-in. It is Sunday around 6 p.m. I was going to check in last night but I didn't get a chance. I finished. This is where we talk things out and I have some thoughts. So this was really really quick and the plot of this is about Miller and her estranged mother Sylvie going to spend a weekend away, kind of get together and talk things out and kind of just like figure out a way to put their relationship back on track to something a little bit more healthy and a little bit more on the normal side. And when they get there, things get a little bit dark and a little bit out of hand. This is definitely very predictable. It's only around 90 pages, so it kind of makes sense that it's pretty predictable. I will say that I don't think the predictability of this story hurts the story because I feel like with the message and the kind of story that this is, it kind of makes sense to go in a more predictable way, a more predictable route. I'll also say that I'm not the biggest fan of this ending, just personally. I don't think it's a bad ending, it's just not my kind of ending. I know a lot of people will love this ending because it's very punchy, it's very like intense. It's a very like hard-hitting ending and I do agree with those points. I still feel like those are all very valid points about this ending. Um, I did like it to an extent. Like I like again how hard-hitting it is. I think it is a gut punch of an ending. I think it is a 
very sad and horrific ending and it makes sense. Sometimes I just don't like those and that's just a personal thing, obviously, but I still really like the story. I think it was really well done and I did like the message. I will say if you have like familial trauma, if you're estranged from a parent or another family member or anything like this, you'll probably feel the story a little bit deeper than others just because I think you'll be able to put yourself in Miller's shoes and I think that could be a little, a little hard for some people. So definitely be careful and, you know, look at content warnings and stuff like that because I do think this story could be, it could be a lot. Like, <laughs> There are just some scenes where I was like, oh my god, like I didn't even have this, like I don't even relate to it this much, but it's just like, it was too much at times for me to read because it's just so realistic at times. The story is just a very realistic story, which is what I love. It's something I enjoy, but I do think it could be a lot for people and a little too much. I do see the similarities between this story and Misery by Stephen King. I just recently read Misery by Stephen King and you don't know my thoughts on it yet. I think you could probably guess just because I'm not the biggest Stephen King fan. Um, I personally prefer this story. Like, I prefer this novella to Misery because it's shorter, it's punchier. I think it works better in this kind of format than in a long novel like with Misery. That's a personal thing. Just letting everybody know. Just personal preference. I really enjoyed this novella and I thought it was really well done. I'll probably give it about four stars. I really, I really liked it. I thought it was good. It was a little bit intense. I don't think it was too intense, but again, I think it would be the level of how well you relate to Miller, the main character, on how intense you'll probably feel with this story. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun and it was really wintry and an isolated setting, which is something I always enjoy in my horror and thrillers. So overall, I really, I really liked this one. I can see why everyone is talking about it and why everyone is like raving about it. So next up, I am currently reading this one right now. I started it last night before bed. I'm maybe like 20% into it. And that is Return of the Living Elves by Brian Asman. I think is how you pronounce their last name. This was actually a recommendation from a lovely subscriber of mine. Thank you, Christy, for letting me know about this one and asking me to check it out. So on Goodreads, it says, when Christmas supply warehouse manager Jimmy tries to help new employee Tommy find a last minute gift for his girlfriend, they accidentally unleash a long forgotten and very seasonal genetic experiment with a taste for human flesh. This novella is about elf zombies. It is only 150 pages and I believe it is a play on the movie The Return of the Living Dead, which I don't believe I have ever seen because I'm not the biggest zombie fan. Um, I don't know if you know that about me. I don't really care about zombies. I think they're kind of stupid. So I don't really watch zombie movies or read zombie books really ever, but this seems a little bit fun. It seems a little bit like silly and goofy. So I'm kind of hoping that it's going to be just like a fun time just in that aspect and just kind of like a silly book that will, you know, just be a little Christmassy, you know, something like that. So, uh, yeah, I am only about 20% into there, so I will let you all know when I get a little bit more into it what's, what's going on, how I feel about it, and all that good stuff. Was just a boy Christmas brought so much joy Couldn't wait for the presents and laughter I couldn't sleep late at night Looking for Santa with lights Those are the memories I still remember Then I became a man Lost sight of who I am Hello friends and happy Monday. I am 
so tired today. I did not have a good night last night in terms of like sleeping. I had a horrible, horrible, horrible headache and it took me forever to get it to go away. I didn't go to sleep till like 3 in the morning because my head was hurting so bad. I wanted to smash my head into a wall to get it to stop. It was just so bad. Like I was just it was just not good so I'm exhausted and I also have a little bit of a sad update for you all. I was currently reading Return of the Living Elves by Brian Asman but I've decided to DNF. I am stopping at 32%. <laughs> I just want to say that I don't think this is a bad book. I just don't think I'm the target audience for this book at all. I personally find the writing to be extremely choppy, extremely like jumpy, and just kind of confusing. I don't really understand the writing. It's just really weird. I couldn't follow along. I was getting really confused by the story and also that leads me into the part where I feel like this story is going to be funny or entertaining if you know what it's like referring to because this book is kind of taking parts of the movie The Return of the Living Dead which I've never seen. I don't know it. I don't get the jokes. I don't get the humor. I don't get the like the story bits that it's taking from it. I don't get all of that because I've never seen it. I don't plan on seeing it. I don't really like zombie movies. I'm not a zombie horror person. So for me, the jokes and the humor aren't really funny, but also I just don't get anything because I don't know what it's referring to. Like, I don't understand what it's like playing off of because I've never seen The Return of the Living Dead. So I feel like I'm just super confused and I feel like I am... 100% not the target audience for this story and instead of finishing it and obviously not liking it because I'm not really enjoying it at all so instead of reading it finishing it and giving it a really negative review because I'm not I'm I'm not enjoying it at all I'm just gonna DNF it <laughs> I'm just gonna stop reading because this book was not written for me I am not the target audience for this story I know that that's completely fine so I do think that a lot of people are going to love it. It has a lot of really like positive reviews on Goodreads. For me personally, I just don't get it. I, I think it's really confusing. I think the writing is really choppy and I don't get it. Like I don't get the humor. I don't get the jokes. I don't get, I don't get what it's doing. Like it's not doing anything for me. I'm just reading a really confusing story that I really don't understand. So I'm just gonna DNF it. I'm really sorry, Christy. Thank you for putting it on my radar and I'm sorry that I didn't finish it. I hope that this helps you determine if you wanna check it out or not. I do think a lot of people will enjoy it. It's just not for me. It's not my, it's not, it was not meant for me to read it. That I'm not, I am not the person <laughs> that needs this book in my hands to read. So because it's Monday, I am editing today. I have a video going up Tuesday that I need to edit and it's gonna take me pretty much all day. It's like almost 3.30 and I need to start here pretty fast or I'm gonna be doing this till like 9 p.m. because editing takes me forever. So I will pretty much be editing the rest of the day and I don't know what book I'm going to start reading next. I haven't decided. I probably won't get a chance to read until around 8 or 9 p.m. So I will obviously show you what I pick then. Hopefully something really good because I feel like I'm hitting a lot of duds and it's really dis disappointing and depressing. Like honestly, I just want to read a good book and I feel like I've been hitting a lot of like duds and I'm really sad about it because I want to end the, the year on a high note and I just feel like it's not. So I'll come back when I have another book picked out and hopefully it's a winner.
Hello friends and welcome to the last check-in for this reading vlog. I did not check in last night but I did finish reading Dead Voices by Katherine Arden. This is the second book in the little quartet that this author writes. The first book is Small Spaces and I really 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 enjoyed Small Spaces a lot so I decided that I wanted to pick up the rest of the books and because I was having like a lot of I don't know I just feel like I've been reading a lot of duds lately and books that I'm not like super 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 interested or engaged in that I just I'm, I'm almost getting into a slump and it's kind of worrying me because I do have other books that I would like to read before the end of the year and so I got a little worried and I was like you know what take a step back take a deep breath and read something fun that you know you're going to enjoy. I figured Dead Voices was like the perfect choice because it's a middle grade horror. It's super fast. Like I literally just read this in a few hours. It's super fun and like I just like the story overall and I already knew I enjoyed Small Spaces so I figured that I would like this one as well. And I don't know. It was just like I needed like a break or something. I think I'm gonna take a break from like the holiday horror that I'm reading and like even the wintry horror that I'm reading because I'm just not reading a ton of books that I'm like overly enjoying. I think I need to redirect my attention or something so after this video goes up I'm gonna take a little break from reading these kinds of books and try to fix my little my little slump or whatever. I did really, really enjoy this one. We're still following Ollie, Coco, and Brian from the first book, except for in this book, they are on winter break. Ollie's dad gets these tickets to this resort and he decides to take Ollie, Coco, Brian, and Coco's mom with him to go skiing for winter break. And then when they get there, things are a little bit creepy. They get snowed in. It's, it's a whole mess right so I really like the setting of this one because it's a wintry setting it's an isolated setting we have some ghosts we got some ghosts in here I would say a really big difference between this one and small spaces is we get a lot more of Coco in this book we get to see Coco kind of doing things a little bit on her own and tackling things on her own and just getting a better feel for Coco as a character. Obviously Small Spaces was more focused on Ollie and I'm wondering if this is going to continue into the third book as well and we're going to get more of Brian because Brian was kind of not really involved in this book and I mean like I understand why but I'm wondering if this is like taking turns almost. So each of the book we're gonna get a focus more on a different child and then like maybe in the fourth book which is the final book it's like all three of them you know fighting the smiling man. So I'm wondering if that's the thing we're following if that's kind of the formula because if so I'm kind of intrigued by that because I really liked seeing more of Coco. I thought that was really cute. I didn't love this one as much as Small Spaces. Small Spaces was easily a five star read for me. I thought it was super scary, super fun. Just it was really, really, really good. I thought it was a really well-rounded middle grade horror and I feel like this one was a little bit less. It was just, it was a little bit more predictable in my opinion. I wasn't able to get the twist in Small Spaces. Like when it happened, I was like, what? And then this one, I was like, oh, okay, obviously like I'm, really sure I know what's happening and not that that's a bad thing necessarily but it did make me take it down to like a four star I that's not a bad rating obviously I really enjoyed this book I will say that I felt like this one had a lot of Coraline vibes like I was just getting Coraline while I was reading this so if you enjoy Coraline I feel like you probably will enjoy this too because they do have similar similar things happening not fully obviously it's not the exact same story but there are some similarities and while I was reading this all I could do was laugh and be like I feel like I'm reading Coraline but like a different a different variation of Coraline <laughs> so I did really enjoy this I thought it was fun and it did what I needed it to do which is give me a break from the not 
so fun Christmassy holiday wintry books that I was reading so I am happy that I decided to go with this one and pick it so I could get kind of a break for myself but yeah my friends that's it I feel like this reading vlog was a little bit more of a dud I feel like my energy was a little bit lower in this one I don't know I just feel like I'm not reading books that I'm really loving and it's kind of making me feel less excited to read at this moment in time. So after this, I am going to like redirect my attention. I think I'm going to read like a holiday rom-com or something. I need to figure out what's going on up in here because I really want to read. So I feel like if I hit a slump, I'm going to be really upset because I do want to physically read. Like I'm excited to read books. So I really don't want to hit a slump. I think I'm going to redirect my attention to something else. So hopefully that that helps out a little bit but I hope you had fun watching this reading vlog I know it wasn't as fun as the last one I did so I hope you all aren't too upset I hope you all aren't too mad at me for this one I'm sorry I tried my best but I guess my picks were just not really good so I blame myself honestly for this I, I really do if you enjoyed this reading vlog please give me a thumbs up it lets me know that you enjoy reading vlogs from me that way I can keep providing you with reading vlogs in the future because I really like making reading vlogs so I hope you like watching them if you haven't subscribed already feel free to do so we can become friends talk about books horrifying books thrilling books romance books manga all that good fun stuff with that being said I hope you are having a wonderful day night morning afternoon wherever you are and I will see you in my next video bye